Miami Dolphins implicitly announced their franchise quarterback. Destroy all speculations about Deshaun Watson's trade. Dolphins W.R. Lynn Bowden Jr. believe in young QB, Tua Tungavailoa. Dolphins defensive tackle Raekwon Davis wins NFL rookie honor. Dolphins announce new offensive line coach in 2021 season. Miami Dolphins notice RB Mark Ingram. Please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell, we'll be start right now. Miami Dolphins implicitly announced that they have chosen a franchise quarterback from Hawaii. Last night, I asked you what do you want to say with our head coach? And, all of the comments reached to the Miami Dolphins coaching staff. You can say I'm fantasizing. But no, in a very weird way, the Miami Dolphins homepage posted this. What I am about to introduce to you now. So, don't forget to leave a comment at the bottom, whether praise or criticism. Because you all deserve to speak your thinkings, at NatFL channel. Oh, those tricky Miami Dolphins. They couldn't go a day without being knee-deep in the rumor mill. Most of the time it isn't the actual franchise that's causing a ruckus on the World Wide Web. It's usually one of their own players, a certain player on another team who plays for a state that's famous for having enormous stakes and rock stars micturating on their historical sites and all the talking heads pontificating about what the Miami Dolphins are going to do at quarterback next year. I know I know, Flores and Greer on multiple occasions at this point have come out and have said that Tua Tungavailoa is their starting quarterback next year. Still, for whatever reason, many still find it entertaining to entertain the idea that Deshaun Watson will force his way to South Beach. Perhaps, ratings are down or something. Hard to imagine with wall-to-wall -wall debate shows. Can't deny the fact the Dolphins may have cemented who will be their starting signal caller next year. This was from earlier today. There it is smack dab right on the official Miami Dolphins smack dab right on the official Miami Dolphins Twitter page. Ohana and that's it. Nothing about that they're a professional football team most of the time, or that they're the only undefeated team in NFL history, 17-0 in case you were wondering or never heard about it. Just one word that says Ohana. But what does Ohana mean? After doing the extensive 12 seconds of research to figure out what Ohana can possibly mean, I found its elusive meaning. Ohana is the Hawaiian term for family. I repeat, Ohana is the Hawaiian term for family. Don't you get it? Put the pieces together. The Miami Dolphins, I assume willingly, have one word in their Twitter bio and that word is the Hawaiian word for family. The Miami Dolphins currently have a quarterback on their roster that is from Hawaii. Unless Timmy Chong is somewhere hidden on the Dolphins roster, maybe he's the emergency COVID QB, or they're bringing in Marcus Maroida for a workout then I am going to make the giant leap of faith and say that this is referring to Tua Tungavai. You're probably thinking to yourself, I don't know Mr. Robot, should we really look too deep into what's written on Twitter as messages of what the future holds? I can tell you that Nostradamus would have been all over Twitter spreading his cryptic messages of the times the world was going to end if had the opportunity. Also, let's not forget that the reason all of the buzz around Watson wanting out of Houston began with a puzzling Twitter message. Then a few days ago, Watson tweeted this. You could make the argument that Watson is simply talking about how he increased the power of his microwave, or you can say that Watson is talking about his frustration, anger level that he has with the Houston Texans organization. I suppose that doesn't really anymore because the Dolphins have cleverly shown their hand on who will be their starting quarterback next year. Yep, glad to know this is all behind us and that it doesn't really have to be discussed again. Enjoy your day knowing you won't have to deal with this anymore. Dolphins W.R. Lynn Bowden Jr. believe in young QB, Tua Tungavailoa. Early in the Miami Dolphins offseason, a report indicated that a number of players on the team have doubts in Tua Tungavailoa's potential to be the team's quarterback of the future. Since then, fans have wondered who the unnamed players in the report were. Receiver Lynn Bowden Jr. recently took to social media to issue a strong message to those who think it could have been him who expressed doubt regarding Tungavailoa. Amidst the rumors of doubts regarding Tungavailoa have also been murmurs that the Dolphins could be a desired target of disgruntled star quarterback Deshaun Watson. Either way, it seems Bowden's confidence in Tungavailoa has not waned. Only time will tell if the rest of the Dolphins players feel similarly. Miami Dolphins defensive tackle Raekwon Davis was selected to the 2020 All-Rookie Team. Raekwon Davis accomplished something no Miami Dolphins player had done since 2008 when he was selected Tuesday to the Professional Football Writers Association All-Rookie Team. 
Davis became the first Dolphins defensive lineman to earn that recognition since Kendall Langford did it 12 years ago. The second-round pick from Alabama, 56th overall, started 16 games with 12 starts for the Dolphins in 2020 and finished second among all NFL rookie defensive linemen in tackles with 40. The only one who had more was second overall pick Chase Young, who had 42 and was announced Tuesday as the PFWA Defensive Rookie of the Year. Other Dolphins defensive linemen to be named to the PFWA All-Rookie Team through the years were Jason Taylor in 1997, Daryl Gardiner in 1996, Tim Bowens in 1994, John Bosa in 1987, and A.J. Dewey and Bob Bohm in 1977. Davis became the first Dolphins defensive player to be selected to the PFWA All-Rookie Team since 2010 when linebacker Koa Missy earned the honor. The last Dolphins player at any position to earn PFWA All-Rookie honors was kicker Jason Sanders in 2018. The other three 2020 All-Rookie defensive linemen were young, Derek Brown of the Carolina Panthers and Javon Kinlaw of the San Francisco 49ers, all of them were first-round picks. The PFWA Rookie of the Year and Offensive Rookie of the Year was Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert. Dolphins announced new offensive line coach in 2021 season. The Miami Dolphins announced today that Lemuel Jean-Pierre has been promoted to offensive line coach of the Miami Dolphins. Jean-Pierre served as the assistant offensive line coach. The Dolphins have parted ways with offensive line coach Steve Marshall. Jean-Pierre, pronounced Le Muel Jean-Pierre, just finished his first season with the Dolphins as assistant offensive line coach. He joined Miami following two seasons 2018-19 as an assistant offensive line coach for Oakland. Jean-Pierre began his coaching career as an offensive assistant for Seattle in 2017. He played six NFL seasons with Seattle 2010-15, helping the Seahawks win Super Bowl 48. He also spent time as a player with Kansas City 2010 and Detroit 2016. Marshall joined the Dolphins for the 2020 season, his 11th as an NFL coach. To Miami after serving as the offensive line coach for the Memphis Express of the Alliance of American Football in 2019. Marshall had NFL experience coaching for the NY Jets 2015-17, Green Bay 2014, Cleveland 2007-08 and Houston 2002-05. He's made 12 stops at college programs, with his most recent NCAA stint coming at New Mexico State in 2013. Veterans and rookies alike attributed Jean-Pierre's knowledge of the game, communication and teaching skill set as strong points during his first year in Miami. He's played the game, Jesse Davis said. I played with him in Seattle actually, so I knew him from a short stint there as well, but he offers a great way to look at the game, too, on how a player looks at it instead of a coach. Lem has done a good job with everybody as well with their techniques to the competition that we're playing that week. The Dolphins started three rookie offensive linemen in a game for the first time in franchise history. Tackles Austin Jackson and Rob Hunt and guard Solomon Kindley started six games together and combined to play 2,314 snaps in 2020. Kindley, back in October, spoke about the competitive atmosphere Jean-Pierre helped cultivate in the Dolphins' offensive line room. Me, Rob and Coach Lem, we're going to see who's going to get the most knockdowns, who was going to get the most pancakes, Kindley said. That's like a good goal between your partner next to you because if I'm trying to do my best and he's trying to do his best, that means everybody's best is going to keep going up. So I love that. I love that competition with him. Mark Ingram. The Miami Dolphins' search for a power back will continue in 2021 after seeing some of the team's more recent investments in heavy hitters come up short. The Dolphins, under the direction of Brian Flores, have tried to peg the likes of Kalen Ballage and Jordan Howard into the role of a physical bruiser, to no avail. Ballage was a colossal flop in 2019 and Howard was arguably even worse in 2020. But the identity of this team is still going to call for a physical presence between the tackles, no matter who the offensive coordinator is in 2021 and beyond. So expect Miami to turn over more stones in their search. The good news for Miami as an interesting candidate has hit the open market. The news broke yesterday that the Baltimore Ravens were cutting veteran RB Mark Ingram, who as recently as 2019 rushed for 1,000 yards and accounted for 15 touchdowns. 
Ingram's release means he is free to sign with a new franchise at any time, and that may be a tempting course of action for a Dolphins team that franchise at any time, and that may be a tempting course of action for a Dolphins team that got bit in 2020 by slow playing their investments at the position and were ultimately forced into pursuing a trade on day three of the 2020 NFL draft to find a running back to add to their stable. The addition they made, RB Matt Breida, was generally considered a flop in 2020 as Miami's offensive line struggled to consistently find enough wins to the perimeter, the area he was most effective in during his time with San Francisco. The downside to signing Ingram is he isn't likely to, to be cheap and he's currently 31 years old, he would instantaneously become the oldest player on the team now that QB Ryan Fitzpatrick is no longer under contract. But if Miami can find an incentive-based deal, Ingram would make some sense. His experience in a young running back room would be valuable and his presence would provide insurance for the Dolphins that they don't have to get into bidding wars during free agency to find another alternative. The appeal here isn't great, given Ingram was fair for a reason, he's on the wrong side of 30 and slowing down. But if Miami can ink their deal based on performance incentives more than anything else, perhaps this is an avenue the Dolphins can embrace early on in the offseason.